Rageaholic's Battlefield 3 vs. Modern Warfare 3 episode was the only conflict more pointless than World War 1, then allow me to be the first to introduce you to the Vietnam War of the video game industry. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 vs. Halo 4. The real of fate is turning. Rebel 1. Action! Halo 4's opening, featuring a smattering of snappy reportage between a scientist and her inquisitor, stands in stark contrast to the interrogation sequence the outset of Black Ops 2, because as loath as I am to disseminate this fact, I was, albeit briefly, in genuine danger of actually giving a shit. If I didn't know better, I'd swear there was an object faintly resembling an actual fucking plot here. A shooter? With a story? A story that wasn't written by a concussed orangutan? What kind of necro-wizard are you, Halo 4? Perhaps most refreshingly, the story patently refuses to handle the player with kid gloves, even alluding to events that take place exclusively in Halo comics and novels that 343 Studios had to know 90% of their prospective audience didn't own, and in all likelihood never will. Granted, trusting the average FPS aficionado to fill in the blanks is like challenging Stephen Hawking to a breakdancing competition. What, my nigga? But it's a welcome sight for any developer to put even misplaced trust in their audience, even if that trust is sometimes at odds with itself. One moment, a character will allude to some bullshit that happened in the Halo Reach novel of some shit, and the next, Master Chief turns into a chatty Cathy and explains the history of human existence up until that fucking point. While it's true the Chief's quipifying adds a smidge of depth, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. This series is still well the fuck above sea level, so make like Cortana's rapidly proliferating cleavage and find some fucking middle ground, please. That said, even beyond Master Chief's sudden in case of Motormouth, Halo 4 isn't without its faults. I must say, the movement feels more off than CNN's Benghazi coverage. Here, have some free advice, 343 Studios. It's hard to feel like a lumbering one-man engine of destruction when half the game you're slipping and sliding like Bambi on roller skates. While many of the set pieces can come across as contrived and some of the plot twists as unpredictable as a sunrise, it's the moments when Halo 4 dismantles the rigid framework and allows the player to experience the world on his or her own terms that the game stands apart from the rake and file. With every verdant jungle dilapidated spaceship and futuristic sci-fi locale artistically rendered in sharp focus, no less, with crisp lighting and tangible texture, visuals are undoubtedly one area where Halo 4 takes Black Ops 2 IW game engine, an engine which I believe predates Hammurabi, by the way, and curb stomps it like a Kent State protester. In a welcome surprise following the Parkinsonian combat interface of Resident Evil 6, for example, Halo 4's shooting feels responsive and satisfying while remaining firmly entrenched in its high-concept space-age weaponry. And perhaps most refreshingly of all, much to the chagrin of the grating pop color protectorate, there is nary an iron sight to behold in the entire fucking game. Graphically speaking, Halo 4 is like the Britney Spears of gaming. Ten years ago, there weren't two swinging dicks in the Milky Way galaxy who wouldn't gleefully mortgage their left testicle for a night alone with her. At least by the visual standards of the day, Halo was a stone cold fox. Yet prosperity breeds obesity, so it follows that Halo 3 and ODST were flabbier than Game of Thrones narrative, or... Game of Thrones audience, but then in the recent past, like their allegorical namesake, they've swung hard to port and away from the porterhouse and managed to right the ship, in the process recapturing something faintly resembling at least superficial relevancy. Call of Duty, meanwhile, is gaming's version of Madonna, not even vaguely attractive even in her day, but low rent and lascivious enough that every shit pants 13 year old has pulled one off to her briar patch muff in the absence of actual pornography. As Father Time has mercilessly bludgeoned this decrepit, busted old sow in a crow's feed canyon, she's responded in kind. <laughs> not by doing a massive overhaul, but by power injecting her face with enough Botox to drop a rhino. Consequently, now the skin on her face looks like three inches of saran wrap spread over three feet of watermelon, while the skin on her neck looks like a Komodo dragon's balls dipped in ice water. This game's graphics have aged like sour cream. And lo, how the procession of memorable protagonist names continues to barrel through like a linguistic motherfucking tornado. Hell, next to Alex and David Mason, Frost, Grinch, and Truck could be readily mistaken for fucking Macbeth characters. Now, now granted, the ability to choose your mission and mission weapon loadout is easily the cherry on top of the turd Sunday, and just in time for the Hitman series to arbitrarily take a sledgehammer to the very same feature. Now listen, on the highway of game design, when you see fucking Treyarch passing your ass in the opposite direction, no less, should that be a fucking sign? Doesn't the government step in and snip your developmental balls off at that point? I mean, what are we, 900 fucking games into this series and we can finally choose our weapon? Stand the Fuck back, folks. At this rate, Treyarch's liable to add vehicular combat by the end of this eon. As for gameplay, well, linearity and vacuous strictures in Call of Duty aren't exactly late-breaking headlines, but the bevy of flashy sequences during which the player is unable to fire or even fucking aim their gun because it's story time, children, strains fucking belief. Now allow me to state the following for the record. I did not 
have sexual relations with them. As I've noted, it's becoming downright on vogue for pretentious neo-twat journalist impersonators to wax contrarian on the subject of Call of Duty's self-evident shittiness. Call of Duty isn't increasingly maligned due to its powerhouse popularity or unsurpassed commercial prominence, IGN. It's universally reviled because dangling from the side of a jeep with your weapon forcibly disabled, watching the game jerk itself off to completion isn't even accidentally fun. Comparing length in Black Ops 2 and Halo 4 is like paying Hornswoggle and dink the clown 15 bucks to stand on their tippy toes and slap fight for a chocolate medal. For perspective, my editor Taryn Gell completed the latest Treyarch opus on veteran difficulty, no less, in a fucking evening. Spoonie's film reviews are longer than this game, and with a more coherent narrative, might I add, which isn't to say that Halo 4 is an Odyssean epic by any means. Black Ops 2 is all of five hours, and Halo 4 slides in at a cool five and one half. Wow. Granted, multiplayer is both games bread and water, but Halo 4 stands head and cankles above the competition in that regard as well. Wider variety of maps, wider variety of game modes, wider variety of weapons, heavier customization, robust theater mode, incrementally less paleolithic user base, greater balance, and at least when they're actually fucking running, the game has better servers too. And Halo 4 actually has local split-screen fucking multiplayer. What a motherfucking concept in the year 2012. So for the five amoebic dickbags who actually give a shit, who wins? No motherfucking contest. Halo 4 beats Black Ops 2 on the train tracks until there's literally nothing left but an amorphous pile of muscle, bones, and rivulets of human flesh. Just by virtue of the fact that Halo 4 is an actual fucking game. Sure, it's a three-hour fucking long game, but look at what it's up against. The Game Overthinker has had longer meals than Black Ops 2, so Rageaholics. Be sure to play Halo 4 while washing down a three ounce bag of Cool Ranch Doritos with a half liter of Mountain Dew Code Red. Do the do! I'm Razor Fist, God fucking speak.